Glory be to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Guys, I I hope you are fine everywhere you are. I hope that you are keeping the statutes and commandments of the Lord. I have a message. I want to share that is so heavy on my heart right now and that the Lord has confirmed to me you know I saw it before but I just didn't want to follow my my own gut you know but I had that strong gut feeling. But I decided not to just follow it. You know, until the Lord releases this, you know, released this knowledge unto me. I want to have good news. And have sad news. The good news is that we are going home soon, really, really soon, sooner than anyone thinks. I want to share a dream I had because at the time when I had it, it was just knowledge, general knowledge of what the dream was about. But now I have received the, the understanding of the entire dream. I have made a couple of videos about the rapture, the rapture, the rapture this, the rapture that. And I'm going to share this. The rapture is already happening. You might agree, you might not agree. But I'm telling you what is happening. The rapture is already happening. It is happening. The rapture is a phase or a period or a process. It is not an event. And that phase or period is already happening. It started happening from the moment God started showing people rapture dreams and so many people have had dreams about the rapture but they did not receive or they did not discern the dream and I want to tell you that I am one of those I understood part but the actual rapture part I hadn't understood that I was just a witness I just saw what happened This is what happened in the dream of my, oh, in my dream of the rapture. So I go to bed after praying at three in the night. And I instantly fall asleep after praying. Please forgive me, I'm, go I'm, go I'm going to sip on some tea as, as I speak because it's quite cold this side. So, I had this dream, I, 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 after praying, I instantly fall asleep. And when I fall asleep, 
I wake up in in the world. I wake up in a different place. I was really in that place because I knew the time and I knew the time by by heart. I knew when it was 7, 7.45 all the way until 6 in the evening. And I knew the places I, I went to because my spirit was witnessing the whole world. Like I showed people from different walks of life, guys. Just imagine looking at the world, observing it. I saw, I saw people from all walks of life. All cultures. And I knew that when it clocked 12, people started disappearing. Now you could find people walking in groups of five, three, some two, and one or two people disappear. But as these people disappeared, there was chaos. Now I saw cars in traffic, cars on bridges, and these cars some some of the drivers disappeared from some of these cars and they caused great accidents and there was chaos everywhere there was chaos all over the earth there was chaos everywhere because of these disappearings and now the disappearing happened from 12 until 6 it didn't people didn't just vanish is vanishing and this it, it was like people disappear like whoa, whoa, whoa. here in this place then the next they all didn't disappear at the same time so it started at 12 until 6 in the evening and 6 in the evening after everyone had disappeared I had stayed and when I had stayed you know, I was walking with a group of like eight people and then I saw, you know, we're walking with these people, we we're walking towards a certain city and you know it was turning dark because there was an orange, you know, like skyline at the horizon, you know, orangish. And there was this very loud explosion like, boah, boah. Like, it was so loud that I knew in the dream that everyone on the planet heard that sound. And I understood that the sound meant all that sound ushered in the reign of the Antichrist. Now, after experiencing that, I woke up in another room. I woke up and I was in another place. In this place, I was in a room on a bunk bed. Now, I, I have shared this in my book. And you can read more about that dream. But the main part was, you know, the disappearings. Now, you know, so many times I, I, I pray to the Lord and ask, Lord, you know, what, you know, what did this mean, you know, and all that. And every once in a while, I go back to my dreams and ask the Lord for understanding. But it's so amazing that God has appointed times for you to understand certain things. I don't know why he does it that way. But fortunately, he does it that way. So...
the, when the vanishings happened and everything, that means death. The disappearances means death. You know, like people leaving their bodies, people leaving, you know, the spirit, the spirit disappearing from the earth. That's what it means. The spirit leaving the body, you know. And every time these people left, they left confusion, they left chaos behind. There were screams, there was chaos, there was confusion everywhere where they disappeared. When every time they disappeared, they didn't leave anything good behind. I saw cars. I saw people. I saw. I saw cars. Now cars meant like ministries, fellowships, churches, gatherings, small kingdoms, or kinds of organizations of leadership. That's what they meant. And all these cars, when the drivers left, these were the leaders of these different groups. They left chaos behind, because they were the people that were really leading these people. They left chaos behind. They left no drivers. They left no people and the earth was in chaos, guys. And here is what happens. The same thing is happening. The earth is in chaos now. I mean, it's so amazing when God was granting me when he granted me discernment of this dream i was like oh my god you know and chaos is happening these these things are happening ministries are crumbling down families are breaking down people in positions of responsibility and leadership are all dying off they're leaving and there's no worthy people to, to to follow through. But this is the good news I have that it is happening now. It is happening. But a time is going to come when darkness, or well, that is six, when the night is when the night is closing in. God is going to close this window. And anyone that stays behind after that period, anyone that stays behind after that period, they will experience the Antichrist uh, age, that, that age or something like that. But the thing is, it is already happening. The Bible says that judgment begins in the house of God. I shared about Christ shaking the tree and getting rid of all rotten fruit. Judgment of the church is already, judgment begins in the house of God. It's already happening. And after it happens in the house of God, that is after the, the period of the rapture is done. When God has, is done taking his people. That is when judgment of the world is going to begin. The judgment of the chaff. Some will turn, some will not. Many will not. Few will turn from their evil ways, but few won't turn. And some who are warm, they're neither cold nor neither hot, because there are so many people like that in the church. They seem like they have character, you know, they seem like they they have the integrity uh, of God, but truth is they are far from it. God knows their hearts, you know, he knows our hearts in secret and people will be shocked, the people that will be there, you know. Now the thing is,
we have a lot of work to do as Christians. And the sad thing is, it's not even about evangelism. It is about how can we start evangelizing when even people in the house do not live right. That is a very sad thing, guys. Let me read for you 2 Timothy chapter 3. This has been weighing so heavily on, on my spirit today. 2 Timothy chapter 3. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers. Incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure, more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. For of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women, laden with sins, laid away with diverse lusts, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Know as James and Jambri, Jambri withstood Moses, so do these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds, reprobate concerning the faith. But they shall proceed no further, for their folly shall be manifest unto all men, as theirs also was. But thou hast fully known my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long suffering, charity, patience, persecutions, afflictions, which came unto me at Antioch, at Iconium, at Lystra, what persecutions I endured, but out of them all the Lord delivered me. Yes. And all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But continue thou in the, in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profit, profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Glory and honor be to God, to Lord Jesus Christ and to the Holy Spirit. Guys, I see, I see Second Timothy verse chapter three, uh, sorry, chapter three, right before my eyes. You see what is happening in the church today? People can praise, people can sing, people can do everything, people can pray, they can speak in tongues, they can do anything. I mean, people will say anything nice about God. They will go to fellowships. They will do anything. They will seem. Verse 5 says, Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, from such 
turn away. This time round, I'm here to to warn you guys to stay away from such believers. You know, the world is so vain today, and the church has adopted. Oh, sorry, has adapted a certain way or, or vanity, you know. Like people in church are vain now. You find people talk about God, talk about this. But these people have problems that, I mean, people can't believe, people don't believe that God can heal their children. Let me tell you something. This this testimony I gave about the Down syndrome, people don't believe it, I'm telling you. They don't. Because they believe in the world more than God. They have been programmed a certain way that they cannot they do not give God They do not reverence God. They do not acknowledge His power. They do not fear Him. They do not respect God. People today in church seek knowledge. They seek how to prophesy, how to, uh, I mean, secret things in the Bible, you know, like that the Lord revealed this to me and that to me, you know. That is what people are seeking. But they're not seeking righteousness. That is why God, He's taking away all His righteous people. And He's going to close. That age is going to come where Christ is going to close up this. That door. And after that, the Antichrist is going to come and rule the world with brutality. And what he's going to do to the world, you don't want to know. Time and time again, we share the word of God, guys. We share the word of God. So many people are serving God online, on YouTube. People are not listening. People are not listening, guys. People are not listening. Do not seek signs. Do not seek to, to to do not seek signs and miracles, guys. Because the life of a Christian is persecution. But Christ gives you joy. But again, He provides a way. Where there seems to be nowhere, you know, no way. Where it seems to be no, you know, nowhere. And the thing is, or well, the challenge is, that you have to surrender out of your own heart. God is not going to force Himself on you. It doesn't matter whether you believe He can do something or not. It is okay. If you believe him, you're in the right place. The sad news I have is that so many Christians are not going to make it. Or so many people who identify as Christians are not going to make it. I'm not trying to break your heart. But the thing is, so many that identify as Christians are not going to make it. Because they're still engulfed in the world. They are watching all this worldly entertainment and they are enjoying it. Just examine yourself, what you watch, what kind of content you watch on YouTube, on your, on your, on your, on your social media, what kind of stuff you listen to. Just check yourself.
So many people are in church, but they're crooks at work. They cheat at work. They cheat in their marriages. They are adulterers. They are fornicators like people sleep around. Let me tell you, I have met people in church. People sleep around in church like nothing, guys. And there's no remorse. Many Christians have done it. I have done it before. I'm telling you. People will give you these excuses that we are not perfect. We are human beings. But you find someone in church, a man sleeping with another man's wife in church. You find a woman sleeping with another woman's husband in church. They meet for Bible study. They do this and that. We are in a time where you need to seek God on your own, on your own, guys, on your own. It is okay that people can encourage you, people can do all this, people can do all that. But right now the church has been infiltrated, guys. Pastors sleeping. The ladies in churches. And they have no regard. They have they feel nothing. Pastors, leaders sleeping around with ladies in the church. One might say that hey. It's the ladies that or the pastor is being attacked with this and that. Guys, let me tell you something. These people love what they do. These people love what they do. People in church fighting. People in church in church politics. Fighting over positions. That who's gonna take this position? Who's gonna be the pastor here? Who's gonna be the, you know, church boards? The church has governments in it, in it right now. It is so funny and embarrassing. Church politics is the most petty thing I've come across in my life. Oh, how people love it to stand in front and talk and brag and share how much good they have in their lives. People love that so much. I do not love it to be here all the time, guys, and be talking to you. But it's, it's strong in my heart. I do not seek any, any, any recognition or anything for the most part. I'm a reserved person, I really want to be alone most of the time. Because everywhere I see, I find things that are so grieving to my heart. And most times I just rather stay back. But God doesn't let that happen to me. God doesn't let me hide. He imparts it upon me. To come and share. And I know so many out there that have like minds, you know, or close or similar to mine, you know. Guys, people are waiting for a rupture, an event. They're going to be disappointed when it is already happening. He's already happening. Mass deaths happening all over the world. These wars, these... How many Christians do you think died in Ukraine because of this? 
Do you think God can't protect the church? He can't protect the Christians? He can. But he's letting things happen because he's tired of, of seeing his children grieving. He's coming back. So many people have had dreams, encounters of Christ, and he's telling them, I am coming back. My church is dead. Tell my people to repent. Tell my people to turn from their evil ways. I always tell people, as long as you're still alive, you have an opportunity to still make it. Someone who's already working in God right now shouldn't brag that they have it right. I can't brag that I have it right. I am glad that I'm not working in the old ways I used to walk. I am so grateful that I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not a kind of person. But I can't sit down and brag that, hey, I'm better than this, I'm better than so and so. I have made it. I haven't. Because I know I can easily fall back into the world. And don't make it into the kingdom of God, of heaven. So that doesn't make me any better than you. Or you are you are not even any better than I. But this kind of competition happening in the church. Who is better than who? Who knows better than who? Whose word has been taken? Guys. This is so sad. This is so sad, guys. I, Oh God, this is so sad. This is so sad. I have met Christians, guys, people that say they love God. People that say they love God. But the way they think way they live their lives is far from what they say like people say oh God I don't know if you've ever experienced anything to do with church politics but it's the most petty it's the most vain it's the most disappointing it's the most heartbreaking thing you can ever at least in my in my opinion or in my in my experience it's one of those most disappointing things i have seen where you see egos rubbing against each other you know and there's this tension and friction that's men don't care anymore about god it is about them Guys, I, I do not know what to say. I don't know what more to say, but these are the things that are in the church. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection without natural affection. You can see this happening in the church. People don't care anymore. Someone just comes and speaks. Uh, when it's, you know, church, fine, they do whatever they do. But if you go to their social media, they are the ones, oh my God. Oh God. They have no affection. Truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, Fierce, despisers of those that are good. They despise the word of God. They despise those that serve God, even in the church. Mostly in the church. That God will speak in your life and he instructs you to do something. They will come out and be like, God can't tell you, can't make you say that. God can't, you don't, you don't speak to God. They will despise you. They will judge you because of the car you drive, because of the, the house you live in, because of the suburb you live in, because of 
the clothes you, you wear because of the color of your skin. I have seen that here in South Africa. You know, these people that are still racist. And these people think they're going to heaven. <laughs> oh, God. But he that endures all these things is he that will make it into the kingdom of God. Traitors, heady, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. Lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. People love pleasure now. We are lovers of pleasure today. The, the, in the church, people are lovers of treasure, of, of pleasure than lovers of God. You find people do things at their own convenience, you know. You find people. See, someone will say that they are a Christian. They can't help the homeless. But they will go for that holiday. It's quite expensive. And hey, it's their money. The same thing God will tell you. It is my heaven. I can't let you in. People cannot support the work of God. But I thank God for one thing. That even when people cannot support the work of God. God provides for his people. He does his miracles. You can lose anything. You can lose. I'm telling you, that was one of my fears. When I just become a Christian, it was one of my fears. To be broke. To be homeless. To fail. To be a provider. To fail to provide for my family, to fail to provide for myself, for my parents, for my mom, you know? That was my fear. But when I grew up in the spirit, I understood. Those things are, they are vain, it is vanity. I don't care if I die broke, serving God. I don't care if I fall hungry and start eating at the streets. And, and I don't care if they evict us here and just go live on the streets. I don't care. And I won't beg anyone. You won't see me here on YouTube saying, oh my God, we've been chased out of the house. I won't do that. I would, I would rather make a video and say, hey, I was evicted, but your turn is coming. Will you be ready for that? That is what I would make. You have to be ready to serve God at the lowest of yourself. Like Job, when he lost everything. If Job served God in that state, I'm telling you, Job, he set the bar really high. We have to beat it. If you do not, I don't think we will make it to heaven. I'm telling you guys. I'm not trying to scare anyone. With all these... Today you go to a Christian... You go to a Christian's house, household, and you find kids watching TV, watching all these strange TV shows, strange programs, listening to strange music, dancing strange things. Young kids, young girls. I'm like, what? And the parents tell they are Christians. The kids, the kids don't even know who Jesus is. The kids don't even know 
any Bible verses. They don't even know any story that really stands out to them in the Bible. But they know a whole song. But they know how to twerk. But hey, who am I to talk about that? Because when you go and speak to someone and you're like, hey, do you really think... These kids are going to be grounded in Christ. You will be the bad one. Today what is bad is good. And what is good is bad. If the world is like that, why doesn't God have to take away his people? That's why God is taking away his people. So he leaves people behind that love to live this kind of life. And those are the people that are going to stay behind. God is only going to take those people that have given up everything for him. So many people have a fear to be poor, to be broke. Because what will make them stay? You know why, why you know, the rich young man failed to go? Because he was so attached to his, to his things. You know, he was so attached to his wealth. He couldn't sell all, all and give to the poor, you know, to be perfect, to be made perfect. You know, I'm not an advocate of poverty, but I've seen, I've heard what prosperity preachers have told about wealth. How people tell you that Paul was was a tent maker. Tent makers were so rich back in the day. That is a lie. Read the book of uh, the all, all the all the letters written by Paul. Paul was a struggling man. At some point, he was a fugitive. Read about Christ. Christ had no home. You can see that. You can read the Bible and these people will lie to you that Christ was a rich man. Christ had no use for wealth. Because he hadn't come to be rich. He knew he was going to be owner of everything. He was the owner of everything at the end of the day when he died on that cross. He went up and he got glorified. And now he owns everything. Everything has been handed to him. But see what he had to go through. He had to become trash to reach where he is right now. How many people are willing to be trash? People always want to justify, oh, oh, you, I, I am the, no one wants to say that, hey, I am sorry. No one wants to apologize. No one wants to move on, you know. People always want to defend themselves, justify themselves. They're not, they're not going to make it. Christ is not coming for such. Go to... Go to a Christian's household today and see what happens there. Go to a Christian's household today and see what happens there. Look at their kids, their children, and see how they behave. You will be surprised. Sometimes I feel like, Lord, should I should I even leave church, like never go to church or anything? But if that was an option for me, I would take it. But I can't do as I desire. The honest truth is, I would desire never to go to church again. To experience this pain, to experience this hypocrisy. To see people that are giving... Christ, grief, and they enjoy it, they, they justify it. Dress code, dress code, people, dre people justify that dress code like nothing, guys. People looking at each other's lives and 
They're just looking who is better than who. Com- comparisons, you know, comparison of lives, of statuses. Guys, I do not know what to say. I do not know what to say. The things people do in the, in secret. God is watching each and everything, guys. Now anyone can say anything, really, yeah, about me or what I'm saying in this video, but let me tell you something. It is going down right now. Christ, he, he, he is marking his people. He has marked and he is marking his people. He's marking his people. And all these things are going to come and destroy people. But judgment has begun already in the house of the Lord. And after it's done, it is shifting to the world. And you're going to see. And look at what's happening all over around you. See what's happening. See what's happening. Guys, it is it is so sad. It is so sad. It is so sad. Sometimes I make these videos and I feel like, Lord, if someone listening, has someone got that? The Bible says that where your treasure is, your heart will be. Your heart will lie. What is your treasure? Is Christ your treasure? Is Christ your treasure? All these people we see compromised, dying off. Every man has a price. Every man has a price. At which, you know, by that price, he will name his price and say, hey, if you give me this, I will be able to do this and da 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 A, B, C, D, and, you know, as long as you give me this, uh, I hope your price is Christ. And it's not anything in the world. I hope your price is Christ. God bless you.